The New York Times just attempted to girl boss the genocide by publishing an article about an Israeli female combat unit fighting on the front lines of Gaza. The attempt to feminize war crimes underestimates all of our intelligence. The article opens with Captain Bussy, a 23-year-old who sleeps with her boots on. This person, who's old enough to be hated for committing genocide, but not old enough to rent a car in America, commands 83 soldiers, some of which are conveniently sometimes Bedouin Muslims. The fact that she's a captain at 23 might explain the high casualty rate of the IDF and the seemingly high number of Israelis killed by their own army. This very young person is responsible not just for the lives of her subordinates, but also for the wounded soldiers they help evacuate from the battlefield. She and her soldiers also help scour the area for fighters, weapons, and rocket launchers, and are responsible for guarding the camp. Let's be clear, two things are happening in my opinion. The raging genocide from which Israelis are pushing buttons on their new artificial intelligence system, and the war against Hamas, where no major damage has been to Hamas at all. I can't overstate the clarity I have as to why this militia seems to have survived intact for over three months. The army is being led by people who have no experience, not only in Gaza, but in life itself. Captain Bussy goes on to say that the military needs women, so they're there. But the article explains that actually, women are being used to bolster the image of the army domestically after the failures of the October 7th attack. But with such a right-wing government, no one in the war cabinet is actually a woman. Even though it's been a real controversy in Israel for women to go into combat, October 7th allegedly changed the argument. And the New York Times attempts to argue that Israeli society is evolving. Quote, in the months since, the needs of the military has propelled societal change at breakneck speed. Same-sex partners of slain soldiers are now legally recognized widows and widowers. So queer people can't marry their partners, but they can finally grieve them when they die. How progressive. If you read between the lines, it's obvious that rather than Israeli society overhauling its intrinsic conservatism, Israel is doing what it can to encourage people to do genocide. Like, female combat soldiers are now, quote, appearing on magazine covers and featured in television news profiles. But what we mustn't forget is that this entire genocide started in the first place because Israeli senior officials didn't believe women. Quote, when female military lookouts sounded the alarm before October 7th that they had spotted unusual activity along the Gaza border, which they assessed to be consistent with planning for a major terrorist attack, they say they were dismissed by their male senior officers, who suggested they were the eyes, not the brains of the military. So you can't believe women about October 7th, but you can put them on the front lines. The article goes on to be more obviously propagandistic and tone deaf in different ways, but one sentence I want to close with is when they say, quote, after sunset, one recent weekday, a reporter and photographer for the New York Times rode into northern Gaza with Captain Bussy and her comrades, stirring up dust clouds in a dark wasteland lit only by an almost full moon. Romanticizing genocide isn't good writing.